Good day for our friends. It is Monday morning and we have a new project on the bench. Without further ado, I'll pick it up and show it you. And look at that. It's got some weight to it. It's a nice looking guitar, isn't it? But it's not a Fender. It's a Squire. Squire Affinity. Beautiful, beautiful looking thing. And you'll notice it's got a non-stock pickup in there. I would imagine this is pretty much the same pickup as the Artec hot rails I have in my Fender American Standard Telecaster. And so on that assumption, um, why does my American Telecaster sound twice as good as this? And I'm not going to say 10 times better. People say, oh no, my American one's 10 times better than that. It's not 10 times better. But absolutely my Fender American Standard Telecaster sounds twice as good as this easily. So I'm going to get into a little topic uh, I've not really addressed ever in any of my videos and that will be talking about tone woods. I've never spoken about tone woods. Do I believe in tone woods? I'm not certain. Does the wood have an effect on this overall sound of the guitar? Well, something does and it ain't the pickup. It's not just the pickup. I'm not saying it is not the pickup. If I have the same pickup in this Squire, as is in my Fender American Standard Telecaster. Why does my Fender American Standard Telecaster sound twice as good? Well, for starters, my American Telecaster is at least half an inch thicker than this. So is that making the difference? Or is it down to the pots and the capacitors? I don't think it is. See, end of the day, whether I stick in a DiMarzio Custom pot or a CTS pot or an Alpha or a Bournes pot, a pot is a pot. A pot doesn't really alter the sound in any way, shape or form. And again, a capacitor, whether it be paper in oil or ceramic or whatever, shouldn't really make a difference. It's all about the, what is, what, uh, the specification of a capacitor or basically the measurement of a capacitor, not what it's made of. So I wouldn't have thought the electrics really make any difference at all. Now you'll have people out there saying, oh, these capacitors are better than that. Bullshit. You ought to go and pay $200 for a fake Bumblebee capacitor for your Les Paul, or you just want to stick a normal ceramic one in there. It's going to sound exactly the same. I'll tell you that for nothing. Wire. 22 AWG, 20 AWG wire is 22 AWG or 20 AWG wire, isn't it? You know, who benefits by using substandard materials? No one. Some people say Chinese materials are, for instance, a substandard. No, they're not. No one is in the... It, no, it's no good to anyone making substandard parts. It's no good to anyone making a crapper metal. It's no good to anyone because it comes back and you get complaints. So, what makes a difference in sound of a guitar? I don't know. I just know that my Fender American Standard Telecaster sounds twice as good as this with, I presume, what I presume to be the same pickup. But anyway, let's talk about why this guitar's in. Why it's been bought, a new client has bought this to me. He lives out in Leicester. He bought this guitar recently. He's not done anything to it since he's had it. He's not had it that long, I don't think. But he's seen my videos on YouTube and he's thought, that's a man I want to sort my guitar out. So he bought it to me. He drove over on Saturday. And uh, it just really needs, there's not really anything wrong with it. It just needs a setup. Uh, one thing I did do is struggled a little bit with the truss rod. I thought this truss rod adjuster was stripped. It wasn't. It's just because it's a four and a half millimeter uh, Allen key in there, and there's not a lot of Allen key to bite. It's only about that. It only goes in about that far. But that's not very good, is it? But it still works. So there you go. It came in. It had two A strings on it. I took the A string off and put a D string on there, and I've had it plugged in and I've tried it. It's a great looking thing. The neck is more or less straight, the truss rod works, the tuners are okay, it's crafted in China, blah 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 blah, it looks the part. Uh, another bugbear on this for me is the way the saddles work, and I'm going to get this way. It's not a string through, so your saddles work this way, and your string goes in, it goes under this part of a saddle and comes out through the top, meaning the string stretches down on the back end of the saddle. I don't think that's very professional, to be honest with you. You know, if you have a real close look, I'll try and hold it straight. Zoom, look at the string there, it's resting on the underside of the saddle. See it? Very unprofessional, so I don't really like that, but 
That said, I love these Affinity Necks. I presume that's some kind of rosewood. It's not the best rosewood, but it's some kind of rosewood. But look at the thickness of the rosewood. Even my Mexican Stratocaster, it's half the thickness of that rosewood on mine. It's like a veneer. This is brilliant. I love these Squire Necks. I've always loved these Squire Necks. I think they're brilliant. Really can't complain, uh, complain about them at all. So, Squire Affinity Telecaster. It's a really nice looking thing, isn't it? It looks great. It's just a thinner body than a, an American. Would I choose one of these over an American? I tell you what, even with upgrades, I wouldn't choose one of these over an American one. Not now, not now I own an American one. But that's just me. Anyone says you can upgrade a Squire to make it as good as an American Fender? No, you can't. Regardless, you, you cannot. It will never be as good as a Fender. The fact, the, the, the fact that it's got a thicker body on a Fender makes, speaks volumes. Uh, you will get a nice guitar and it will sound good. <clears throat> I mean, the frets in this look really, really nice. But not, again, it's a proper Fender knot made of Cyclovac, which is a man-made material that replicates bone. Nice material. It's well cut. Fabulous looking guitar. <clears throat> and I'm sure you get good sounds out of it. Uh, the neck pickup, absolutely awful. Sounds nothing like my American one. Awful pickup. Modder. Horrible. Uh, but rest of it, it's a nice looking guitar. So what am I going to do to it? Well, I'm going to get it set up. That's what it's coming for. It's going to have a set up. <coughs> a bit of crossbow fret rocker. There are two or three frets rocking. So it's going to have uh, 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 those frets sorted out. I'll get a better idea once I've got the strings off, got my neck straight. But I've already told the owner that I, whatever it needs to do, and I could probably do it by hand. I don't think a lot of frets are going to need doing. So we're just going to give it. We're going to give it a, a bottom to top or top to bottom strip and rebuild from the bottom up. Once we've got everything off, we're going to level some frets, recrowd some frets, and we're going to give it the full works. It's having the full, um, the full set up with a new set of strings. So I'm going to crack on with that. I'm going to get the strings off. Now I've played it. The electrics, pretty bog standard electrics. You've got a three-way switch. Da, 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 da. Nothing spectacular there. You've got a couple of pots, nothing spectacular there. I can't remember what pots were in there. I did look inside. Just two standard pots, I believe, 250k pots. Uh, nothing extraordinary. I'm going to take everything off. I'm going to take the pickup off and find out what it is. Because it may not be an Arte, and that may be why it doesn't sound as good as my American. Who knows? I imagine that it's pretty much the same spec as the pickup I've got, so I will see about that when I've got it off. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to strip it, get the strings off, give it a clean, check the tools. Every nut and bolt on this will be checked, tightened, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll check all the tuners, we'll check all the electrics, we'll check what pickup is in there, we'll check the grounding. Uh, the strap pins will all get done. We're going to set the radius on the uh, saddles because that's not set properly. We're going to make sure the radius there matches the radius on the neck. We're going to recut the nut if it needs recutting. The nut is cut pretty well. Could go a little bit lower on there. And I think we're going to go with a set of nines on this because the guy who's bought it is a new player. He's not been playing long. Uh, and a set of nines is going to help his fingers a bit better. They're going to be a little bit easier to play. The neck is set beautifully. Nice straight set neck. We've got the same distance on the strings on each side coming inside the neck there. That's good. That's nice to see. Nice neck, I do like these necks. I would not, you know, I would, I would recommend these necks highly. So I know I was looking for a new neck for a guitar, there's nothing wrong with Squire necks, I really quite like them. For what they are, for Squire, very, very good. So that's it, I'm gonna crack on, get the strings off, and I will come back and give you updates along the way. We'll have this one done in a couple of hours, I imagine. Stay tuned. Here we are, and lo and behold, and I did put my reputation a little bit on the line when I started recording this video because I didn't know the pickup in here was exactly the same as the one I've got in my Fender American Standard Telecaster, and it absolutely is. There you go. It is an Artec TRA73C, exactly the same pickup as I put in my Fender American Standard Telecaster last week, yet my own Telecaster, my American Telecaster sounds twice as good as this. So, reputation, my reputation is still intact. What a great pickup this is. But this pickup is a standout thing on this guitar because it just blows what would have been there, the original one away. Fantastic. The only other thing with these, the screws in these 
Obviously not as big and bulky as on an American Telecaster. I'm going to put this back in. So we've now ascertained that it's exactly the same pickup as in my American one. Yet my American one sounds twice as good. Fantastic. Um, the only difference being, I, I, I don't know what wood this is. I don't know what wood my American Telecaster is. I imagine my American Telecaster is probably... I don't know. It's not probably guessing, is it? got no idea. It'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, so tone wood. I don't want to get into that argument of tone wood, but let's just say that my American Telecaster, which is half of an inch, or probably 10, 12 millimetres thicker than this Squire, sounds twice as good. And I do have, I do actually have premium pots in my American. Uh, I have, well actually I'm saying that, not so much premium, I have an Alpha, Push pull 250k linear tone pot, and I have a I believe a CTS vintage type, which is a 450s 300k logarithmic or audio pot on the volume. But to me, I've had alpha pots in a lot of guitars over the years, and they sound just as good as anything. So I don't get all this. Oh, you've got to have this, that, and the other. You're talking marginal. I mean, really, really marginal if there is any difference at all. So, there you go. So, I've ascertained that this guitar has exactly the same bridge pickup as my Fender American Standard. Yet, yeah, my American Standard sounds a lot better than this. So, there you go. Uh, I'm going to just have a look inside the electrics while you're here on camera again. And I'm sorry you're not seeing this, you're just seeing me and hearing me babble on. You know, I'm sure some of you, I want to have 3,000 subscribers if you didn't enjoy me babbling on a bit, would I? So, uh, just get this off, I'm just going to have a look inside at the electrics. I have ascertained that this is a 2017 model, by the way. Uh, with two clues, one being the 17 on the serial number, and another one being the date on the heel, 2017. Uh, so there you go, it's a 2017 model. Let's have a look here at... I was taking the wrong screw out. Let's put that back out, take a selector screw out. Excellent. So, end of the day, I'm not ripping this guitar or slagging this guitar off. It's a fine guitar for what it is. But even with the pickup upgrade, it is not. And even if, even if you stuck a Seymour Duncan up rails in there, it still wouldn't sound like an American. So let's have a look in here what we've got. There you go. We've got two full-size parts. These will be 250k. I guarantee it. Two full-size parts. Do they have a measurement on there saying what they are? No. Um, they do have something on the underneath, it will tell you whether they're, they're, they're A or a B. I can have a look at that later, it's not really important. Uh, but I imagine you would have an audio or an A or a logarithmic as a volume, and you will have a linear or a B as a tone. That is normal fare for these, this type of configuration. You've got an 8-way import. Five way switch here, well, three way switch, should I say? Very simple wiring. Uh, it's wired pretty okay. There's nothing wrong with any of that. So, there's no need for me to touch any of that. Uh, to make this guitar better, what would I do? I would stick a four way, I would put a four way switch in there myself, and then you would get a much better, you'd get a, a fourth option of the bridge and neck pickup together in series, which really beefs up the tone. Uh, the neck and bridge pickup on this guitar sounds good anyway, even in position two. Uh, but on position four, even better because it boosts, it just boosts the bass right up. It just sounds a lot, lot better. I love it on my American. So, four way switch would be nice in this. Uh, an option to split the coils or to coil split the humbucker would also be nice. You could do that on a push pull pot. The only problem with that is I don't think you have enough room in that cavity to put a push push pot or a push pull pot because the body is 35 mil wide and you'd have to route down 33 millimeters. It would leave you two mils at the bottom. I wouldn't like it to be that thin. Uh, but you could stick a mini toggle switch in the center there to split the coil, which is what I would be uh, inclined to do somewhere later down the line. I would have thought that and I would like to go, I think pressed steel, steel saddles in this will be better than these flat ones. But that's how I think you'd upgrade it and definitely upgrade this pickup, uh, because it's rubbish, the neck pickup, 
not when I've got this really, really muddy and muffled. But anyway, that's it, I'm gonna crack on. I'm gonna do the fret leveling shortly. Uh, we'll come across with a fret rocker, we'll show you which ones need leveling. Um, but the electrics and everything on this is absolutely fine. So this part of the guitar doesn't need anything. All I need to do is set up the radius on the saddles and the intonation. I can do that later. So I'm gonna put this out of the way because it's not needed. And I'm now gonna crack on, get the next straight. I'm gonna crack on, I'm gonna go across with fret rocker. I'm gonna check these frets. So, back soon. So, moving on to the frets. And we have the next straight. And you can see the next straight there. Beautiful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across with fret rocker. Easy to explain how a fret rocker works. It has four lengths of varying sizes. We go shorter and shorter. And what we do is we check three frets at a time. As we move along with fingerboard, we turn over to where we can just do three frets. You see how it works. Blah, 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 blah. And if we get a rock, we determine that that fret in the middle is high akin to those two. I've already been across and marked off the frets which are rocking. We do actually have six. I only include five on an intensive setup, but in this case, because there's not a lot of uh, rock in some of them, I'm just gonna include this in the price anyway. I'm not gonna go anymore. So we're gonna go across the frets. I believe the first one that is high is number nine. So we should be getting there now. And there you go number nine and it's rocking just in the middle so what we do is we take a marker pen what have we done with it it's like here and we mark off number nine in the middle and that we need to just reduce the height on that just by a little check again it's going a little bit further along so and i can do these with a hand file by hand i'm not going to film all of that uh, I've done many videos where I'll show the next one we should have is number 12, about 10 is okay, 11 is okay, oh no 11, just on this side, just on this right on this edge, oh so we do an extra one, so we have 7 to do, but there's nothing in that so no extra for those two, number 12, far edge, Side. The next one I believe is 14, but let's check 13. 14. Okay, number four edge. 15, I believe, on the same edge. So not a lot of work. Number 15. edge next one I believe is number 18 and my last one so we'll try 16 very good 17 18 in the middle there 18 in the middle as well that's high on the edge missed that one before 19 so we do have eight frets but because through my experience I know that this is quite minimal so I can do all this with a hand file which means I don't have to put it on the on the jig means I don't have to charge for a complete fret level I can all do I can do this I can knock these frets out in in 30 40 minutes no problem get these sorted out and recrowned and polished so I'm not, there's not going to be any extra, uh, which one did I just measure there? Number 19 as well. So I have number 19 to the list. So we have frets 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, 18, 19, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. We have seven frets that need attention. Did I, was there anyone? Else? Ah, 11 as well. Let's stick 11 in there. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 18, 19. We have eight frets that need attention. So I'm going to crack on with that. I'll explain it really quickly what I'm going to do. Where the frets are high. I'm going to go across that way with a flat file just to bring the height down so we get no rock like on these. 
it is possible that altering these will alter the ones next to them. We'll, we'll sort it all out. And what I'm going to do is once I've done that, we're going to where I flatten these bits at the top, I'm going to have to recrown. I'll just use a profiling file to do that. So I'm going to do that. It's going to take me a short while, but once that's done, we can come back and we can treat the fingerboard with some lemon oil, or you know it's lemon oil, it's actually mineral oil. We'll let that soak in, all the grime soak out, and we'll wipe it all off and it'll treat the wood. And we, in the meantime, while we're to dry, we'll polish all of the frets. Once that's done, we can get the guitar, get some strings back on it and get it set up. So I've levelled and re the frets and I'm moving on to the polishing of the frets. Now you'll see I have the fingerboard coated in mineral oil. I'm letting that soak in. While it's soaking in, I'm going to polish the frets. And what I do is I use a fret guard. This will stop my wire wall, steel wall going into the wood and scratching the wood. And all I can do is I can just go over the top that you're probably not going to see from there because the camera's not high enough. But I'm just going to go across the fret and just polish and I have 21 I believe to do really really simple just move the fret guard to the next one and polish over the top and I can do this while the mineral oil is soaking into the wood which is going to nourish the wood it's also going to raise all the finger crap off the top of there and I'm able to wipe it off so it serves two purposes uh, nourishing the fingerboard wood by the way something we should do at least once a year, maybe even twice a year, yeah, because it gets all the grime off your fingers, floats it all off, because it does soak into the wood and it's horrible. But it also stops the wood going brittle, it'll stop it cracking in later years. That's something I encourage you to do, not every time you change the strings, but I'd definitely, I'd say do it about every six months. Or bring it to me, I'll do it for you. But there you go, polishing the frets, I'm going to get these frets finished, once that's done, I can wipe off the excess and we can get some new strings on and get the guitar set up. And here we are, all done. And what a beautiful guitar this is. Absolutely fantastic, great looking thing. Um, at the end of the day, it's a Squire. It is not a Fender, it's not going to sound like a Fender. Though with the Artec pickup upgrade in there, this does sound pretty, pretty good. In fact, it sounds very, very good. It sounds excellent. Um, the neck pickup, a little bit muddy for me, uh, but the guitar itself, well built, looks fantastic, and now we have a new setup. And let's show you the frets now we've all had a level of polish. Absolutely beautiful. So, what have we done? Well, it's come in, it's had a complete setup. I've been in under the uh, pickup guards. I had to go in under this pickup guard, remove the scratch plate as well because I needed to lower this edge because it was up a little bit too high. Yeah, but now it's all good. The only way you can alter the height of this pickup, by the way, is removing the old plate, which is a bit of a pain, but it's all good. So the upgraded pickup in there is the Artec one, same as that, same one, exact same pickup as I have in my Fender American Standard Telecaster. Yet my Telecaster sounds twice as good. What's all about? Now, albeit my American Telecaster is a good half an inch thicker than this. So is it the wood or is it the thickness of the wood? I'm not, I don't buy into the tone wood thing totally. I do believe that a different wood will make some, make my, my, may make a tiny difference uh, because you've got softer woods, harder woods, what have you. Maybe the thickness of the wood, a little bit different. Maybe it's just a combination of the wood, the hardware, the electrics, whatever. The electrics don't make that much difference either. So, what do I know? People say tone is in the fingers. Well, I think tone is actually in the soul, in your own soul. You know, I can virtually play, pick up any guitar, plug into any amp, and I'm always going to sound like me, no matter what guitar or amp it is. You know what I mean? Maybe there's something in that, look into it. Who knows? And maybe I'm just a looper. Who knows? But anyway, what a fabulous guitar. It's coming. We'll have the neck off. We've tied every screw on there. Uh, blah, blah, eight, and we, yeah, every screw, even the strap pins. Um, we have checked, we have reset the intonation. We've set the radius on the saddles, there was no radius on the saddles at all when I got this, it was just flat across. So that's now set. I've set the action at the 12 fret, 1.75 on the low E, 1.5 on the high E. Um, the nut slots are fine as they are, the guitar stays in tune, plays in tune, it's intonated correctly. And that's it, it's had a new set of strings and it's all done. It's had a good clean, the fingerboard's been treated, nourished and oiled, frets have been levelled and polished, 
tuners have all been tightened, everything's been checked. What a beautiful guitar. But that is the first one of Monday done. It's just coming up to lunchtime. Um, but we're finished. My name is Victor Christian. I'm your fret friend. Before I go, if you want to know anything about me at all, go to Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. You can find uh, all about me there. You can find out what I do. You can look at some pictures. You can watch some videos. You can check my uh, listings and uh, find out anything you need to know about Fret Friend and what we can do for you and your guitar. So that is me, Victor Christian, signing off until next time. So until next time, boys and girls, as always, I say God bless, be good to each other, and I will see you soon.